ڈائنسٹی بھائی مروان ابن الحکم بھائی ہو مروان ابن الحکم مروان ابن الحکم ہی بیکیم خلیفہ آپ امیہ ڈائنسٹی ہے آفٹر معاویہ دی سیکنڈ آفٹر ہو معاویہ دی سیکنڈ دیر واز معاویہ رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ دی کمپینین آف دی ہولی پرافیٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آفٹر ہم دیر واز ہی سن یزید ابن معاویہ یزید فیمس گائے Yes, Yazid ibn Ma'am. But Yazid has his son. His name was Muawiyah as well. He's called Muawiyah Sani. Or Muawiyah the second. And he was a pious man. He was a pious man. People used to call him Hamamatul Masjid. The pigeon of the mosque. He was called as pigeon of the mosque. Look at his father Yazid. And then son. Yukhrajul Hayyah. من الميتة ويخرج الميتة من الحي الله سبحانه وتعالى brings out dead from alive and alive from dead mean good from bad and bad from good so Muhaviyah the second he was Hamamatul Masjid and his routine Yazid he appointed him Khalifa after his death that he will be Khalifa after my death that was constitutional that was the constitution of that time so after his death People gave, gave their pledge to Muawiyah, the second. Muawiyah, the second. And he was a young man. And he was that much pious, that eating a little bit. Once a day or once in two or three days. And then reciting Quran, or studying religious books, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, at night time he was not sleeping. All night long, he was either reciting or studying or praying. Got it? So after six months, yes, he became very weak. And he became Khalifa. So after six months, he came for Juma prayer and he said that maybe I will not come out of my house again. Because my health does not allow me to come out. So now, you know and your affairs. So this rule or khalafa, that's up to you. Whosoever you want to appoint him as your khalifa, so just do that. Got it? So from that family or that house, the khalafa went to Marwan ibn al-Hakam. To whom? To Marwan ibn al-Hakam. But he was also from Bani Umayyah, but not from the, from the family of Muawiyah, رضي الله تعالى عنه. He was from the family of his cousins. He was from the family of his cousins. But this guy was a constructive guy. This Khalifa was a constructive Khalifa. So many masajid he built up in his lifetime. So one was Al-Aqsa. One was Al-Aqsa. Dome of Iraq, that is built up by Marwan ibn al-Hakam as well. Dome of the Rock, that is built up by him. And I went there to Ashabul Kahf, to whom? 
to Ashabul Kahf, people of the cave. You went there, Hussein? Yes. So you saw in front of, in the, in front of the entrance. Yes. There is a, I mean a small type wall there. Yes, and there is a mehrab also. So that is actually an old mosque, we don't know who built it. That was an old one. Now it is broken. Only the foundation is seen there. But over the mountain, yes, in a little bit back to the cave, there are some pillars. There are still these pillars are standing. So that was a masjid at that time Marwan ibn al Hakam built it. Yes. Marwan ibn Hakam. And now there is a third masjid which is built up by Hussein. By you. Yes, by Malik Hussein. By who? By Malik Hussein. Beautiful masjid there. I prayed, my mother prayed there. So anyhow. So Marwan, he was building up masajid. Yes, and then his son, Abdul Malik, he had the same nature. Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, he had the same nature. And then his son, Walid ibn Abdul Malik, he was building up Masajid. Got it? So anyhow, Masajid is the plural of Masjid. And Masjid means worship place of a revealed religion. Worship place? A, a revealed religion. So that's why I mentioned that the worship place of Jew was called the Masjid, of Christian was called the Masjid, of Muslim is called Masjid. And why? Because Masjid literally means the place where people are making sajdas to Allah. The place where people are making sajda to Allah. And prayer in revealed religion is known for sajda. Now if you will go, look at me. If you will go to Jerusalem, so you will see the Jew people there, yes, standing to the wailing wall and doing like this. Yes, this is their worship. Standing to the wailing wall, yes, and doing like this. This is their worship, yes. Reading Torah and uh, uh, this is their worship. But that is not the actual worship in Judaism. The actual worship in Judaism is the same prayer as we are doing. So if you will go to the right bank, where? To the right bank, on left bank there is Jordan. On right bank there is, yes, Palestinian area. Got it? Palestinian authority area. So if you will go to the right bank, so there are the Orthodox Jews. There are, the Orthodox Jews are living there. They are praying the same way. Yes, standing either like this or like this. Then making ruku, then going to Sajda. Got it? So, this is the known practice in revealed religion, in Christianity and in Judaism. Got it? But when people do not remain practical and committed to their religion, yes, so they fabricate their own rituals in this regard. Yes, as liberal Muslims. What liberal Muslims are doing? Yes, khatm quran But what about prayer? Khatna Quran is not recommended even. Do you pray? Or the guy for whom you are going to recite Quran, he was praying. So he was making a fun and joke with this holy Quran, he will be reciting, oh Allah forgive him. This Quran will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, push him to the hellfire. Because he was the guy in his lifetime, he never obeyed a single order of mine. Yes. So wherever, Allah ahada so invoke not anyone beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Invocation someone beside Allah is not allowed Islamically and especially in masjid. If you are invoking somebody else in metaphysical world, so that is haram. That's a major sin. That's what? A major sin. Yes. So masjid is originally and basically for worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other things are secondary. Other things are secondary. And that is the difference between liberal and practical Muslim. That practical Muslim says, masjid is originally for ibadah and worship. Other things are secondary. But liberal people are saying that masjid is originally for other things. Yes, ibadah could be done there. Got it? That's for sociology. That must be originally forward. That is liberal concept. That is not Quranic concept.
must is not for sociology sociology is secondary we are coming here to get together for worship or for socializing for worship yes but secondary yes in a supplementary we do socialize with each other we are are doing other things which is permissible in sharia doing other thing which is permissible in sharia even though rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam became angry with someone when he stood up after prayer and he said making an announcement making an announcement something lost something lost yes so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam became angry and to correct the concept about masjid prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in al masajid buniyat lis salawat that masajid are originally for prayer that is not for other thing don't make it the original purpose of masajid to do something else to socializing got it or not it or what it yes wa anna al masajid lillahi and that the masajid are for allah subhanahu wa taala mean for his ibadah fala tadu maghallai ahada so dua one meaning is invocation and second meaning is worshiping dua is ibadah and ibadah is dua dua is ibadah and ibadah is dua fala tadu maghallai so do not worship with allah subhanahu wa taala ahada anybody else worship allah only do not worship with allah anybody else and another meaning of the ayah wa anna al masajid and that al masajid masajid is the plural of masjid the organ you are making sajda with the organs are the parts of bodies you are making sajda with and as we mentioned that sajda is made on seven or eight organs detail we we did it yes in sajda we did the detail two feet two knees two hands and then the forehead then the forehead to put your forehead on the ground when you are making sajda that is for us that is for us got it or not it got it yes only abu hanifa said rahimahullah if somebody put his nose on the ground and not forehead so he said sajda is done but wajib is missed sajda is done but wajib is missed other fuqaha they are of the view with only nose sajda is not done with only forehead is done without nose if somebody put his forehead on the ground but not nose so sajda is done according to all of them but abu hanifa says if somebody will put his nose on the ground and not his forehead look at me like this subhan rabbi al ala subhan rabbi al ala so he says that farz sajda is done but wajib is missed farz sajda is done but wajib is missed and he referred to a hadith of abdullah ibn abbas radhiyallahu ta'ala an that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was referring to sajda and sajda organs their qadamain rukbatain yadain and he said wal jabha wal jabha wa wada'a al isba'a ala anfihi yes ibn abbas said wal jabha and the forehead and what the forehead but yes he used the word forehead but to indicate he put his finger on nose he put what his finger of nose now the word mean forehead but the action means nose the action which he did it means nose so it means that it will work his action means that nose will work in sajda as far as far as is concerned that is number 1 and number 2 abu hanifa said rahimahullah that actually this nose structure is connected to forehead it is or not it is yes the same portion so he said that that is a piece of forehead that is what huh nasal septum so he said that nasal septum is a part of forehead yes i don't know that he was ent specialist or what huh. abu hanifa was ear nose and throat specialist yes now look he said that when you are making wudu 
So washing your hands, elbow is included. Number one, because of ila, ila al-marafiq. And number two, because of structure. He says, because of structure, this is a part of this forearm. This elbow is a part of this forearm. So if you left it and you did not wash it, you wash up to here. So he said, wudu is not done. Because if you will open this area, or just ask for him, yes, to have an x-ray of this forearm with elbow. So elbow is a part of forearm. So Abu Hanifa rahimahullah, number one, grammatically he says, illa al-marafiq. Fafsidu wujuhakum wa adiyakum illa al-marafiq. Wash your faces, wa adiyakum, and your forearms or hands, illa al-marafiq, with elbows. Illa al-marafiq, with elbows. So he said, because of illa, this is included, and because of structure, that is included. Because of what? Illa, and because of structure, that is included. Got it? So the same thing he mentioned it, that look in masa, look at me. When you are making masa of head, so as I told you that the good way is just wet your hand, then these three, three fingers, yes, and keep these two fingers and protect it, not to touch your head, and also the palms may not touch your head. So from forehead, just take it towards the neck. In the middle of the head, just do like this. And therefrom, the sides of your head, yes, with the palms, but protect these two fingers. So it may not be used. These two fingers may not be used. So you will use it for what? For your ears. For what? For your... And Abu Hanifa says there is no need of uh, new wet for ears. For new, there is no need of new wet other Imam says that there, this is sunnah, to take new weight for your ears. Abu Hanifa says, Rahimahullah, even though if your head has been touched by your two fingers, still you can do your masa with that used two fingers. They say, how? That is used. That is, so the used weight you cannot use for another practice. So Abu Hanifa says, there is a hadith, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Al-Uzunani min ras Al-Uzunani? Men are ras. Ears are from head. Ears are from head. So he says that such a wise ears are not from head. Here you cannot say that ears are the parts of head. Here is different organ. So Al-Zunani Men ras that is a shari issue. That ears are from head means that you can use the same wet for your ears when you are doing Musa. That's how he explains the hadith. So now, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ And that the organs are of sajda لِلَّهِ That is for Allah. So organs of sajda are for Allah. Our whole body is for Allah. Yes, our whole life is for Allah. The entire world is for Allah. وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ Means the parts of body one is going to make sajda with that is for Allah, means that sajda is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means the organs of sajda for Allah means sajda is only for Allah. Nobody can make sajda for anybody else. Nobody can make sajda for anybody else. Got it? Ulamma kama abdullah kadu yakununa ghalihi libada وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا كَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ This ayah has two meaning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the history of the messengers and actually consoling Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that whenever in history a messenger and prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stood up to convey the message to convey the message so people use yes to surround him from all around to attack him. Yes, to surround him from all around to attack him. So actually, Prophet ﷺ was consoled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this practice of the people of Makkah is not a unique practice. This is history of message and messengers. Yes, so you may not be disappointed. You may not be disappointed. This is one meaning. And second meaning is that Allah is referring to the story of jinn. That when the servant of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
He stood up. Yadhuhu, worshipping Allah. Kadu yakununa alayhi libada. So these jinns, they were surrounding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from all around to listen to him very carefully. Got it? So the first meaning is regarding attack on the messengers of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, their people used to plot to attack the messenger of Allah. So you may not be disappointed or disheartened. And the second meaning is that the jinn, referring to the story, that the jinn, they were surrounding Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to listen to him from a very close circuit. From what? Very close circuit. وَإِنَّهُ لَمْ وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ It has been revealed to me that when the slave of Allah Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم stood up يَدْغُوهُ Invoking Allah or worshipping Allah كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ غَلِهِ لِبَدَى So the jinn just made round him a dense crowd. The jinn make round him what? A dense crowd. D-E-N-S-E a dense crowd as if sticking one over the other, they were dead close to each other, like as one is sticking on the other. Yes, coming close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And a scholar, some seven or eight hundred years before, his name is Allama Shibli, he has written a very famous book that is called Akamul Marjan Fi Yahkamil Jan. Akamul Marjan Fi Yahkamil Jan. Regarding jinn, he has written a very famous book. Regarding jinn, I don't know that's translated in other language or not. But that is originally in Arabic language, Akamul Marjan, Fi Akamul Jan. So he talk about the origin of jinn. What? The origin of jinn. And then he spoke about that how they are living. And then he talked about how they were with the messengers. And he talked about that how many times Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam specially went to jinn to convey to them the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though in the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is a story our Imam Imam Waliullah Imam Waliullah rahimahullah Ad-Dailazi rahmatullahi alayhi once he was sitting in his library and he was writing he was writing a white snake fell down from the ceiling. Got it? White snake. So Imam Buliullah killed it. Yes. And mostly you have seen that the snake does not have blood. The snake does not have flowing blood. Yes. There is only red color like that of a fish. Yes. But there was a lot of blood it was flowing. Yes. So Imam Buliullah, he said that it was amazing. A snake. That much blood. He said, after a while, after a while, a few people came, yes, and they made me handcuffed and took me out at night, took me out with them. They took me out of Delhi, where? Out of Delhi. Delhi is a big city, in the capital of India, yes. So they took me to an open area. Lot of people were sitting there, and there was a dais. And on dais, some pious people with beard and with turbans and with religious uh, hulia and religious shape, they were sitting there. So I asked them that what's going on. They said that you have been charged by murder or with murder. I said, me with murder? I said, yes. Yes. That this guy said that he killed my father. He said, I have never killed any, any human being in my lifetime. He said, no, a little while before, you killed a snake. He said, yes, of course, I killed a snake. So it was said to him that it was not a snake. It was a jinn. It was what? It was a jinn. And uh, you have killed that jinn. So you have been charged for murder. Yes. And uh, now you are a halim and you know that what will be the decision. I said, yes, I know the decision. But I killed a snake. I did not kill a human or jinn. He said, but that was jinn. So Imam Waliullah says that I was not aware of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That hadith was not known to me. That now when they were starting the hearing of the process and the procedure. So the plaintiff, yes, 
he made his uh, claim to the court. So, there from the gathering, a very old man and very wise man, he stood up and he said that, Mr. Justice, said yes. He said, Kuntu ma'a Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fi masjid al Madina. I was sitting with the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Masjid of Madinah because jinn have very long age, long life. Yes. So I was sitting with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was referring to certain cases. You know, for example, at night. For example, at night, if somebody put on himself the lion skin, what? The lion skin and he was coming like a lion. Yes, only to frighten you or to make a joke with you. You know what I am saying? He was coming like this. Yes. And because of fear, you attacked him and you killed him. You attacked him. You killed him. And later on you came to know that, oh, he is a friend of mine that was not a lion. He was pretending that he is having the skin of lion. Now in that case, there is no any retribution and no any fissas. And there is no any blood money even. There is no any blood money even. Why? Because of that hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Man badda hadrun. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Whosoever, he changed his shape. He changed his shape. And he got killed. So his blood does not have any value. His blood does not have any price. For example, a decoit or a robber or a thief being killed when he was committing theft. Yes, so the guy who killed him, he would be charged for that murder? Say, why? Because that human, he changed his shape. He changed his shape to a thief or to a robber and being killed. So his blood does not have, because of this one hadith, there are hundreds of issues based on this hadith. Got it? So he said that that old uh, man, he told the court that Rasulullah sallallahu said, Man baddala ziyahu faqutila fadamuhu hadrun who changed his shape. Who changed? His shape. And he made his shape or transformed his shape to such a shape that he was to be killed. He was to be like a lion if he is attacking you or a dog he is attacking you or a snake attacking. What you will do? You will kill to defend yourself. You will kill to defend. And later on you came to know, oh, this was not a dog. It was a man who put on himself the shape of dog. What, what they call in in, in October, what they put, uh, yes, in Halloween, what they are putting, what they got? How you, how you spell it? Yes, a different type of shapes. Costume, yes. So somebody put the costume of lion on him, or a snake on him, or a dog on him, and he, yes, he was only frightening you or joking with you, but you became afraid of, and you thought that this is real, and you killed him. Yes, so this blood does not have any value and price in Sharia. God has not. The only thing is you have to prove it, to prove it. That I have killed him in such a way. God it. So when that old man, he mentioned the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now the court decided that the case dismissed. The claim is dismissed. The plaint is dismissed. So... They took off my handcuffs and I was a free man. But Imam Allah said that I was not happy with that acquittal of mine as I was happy to shake hand with the Sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he said that I went to him and jumped to him, salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So you were with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said yes. I was with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then I asked him that what is your name? So he told me that my name is Qazi Shamhuras. Qazi Shamhuras. So that's why it is said that in one way or the other, Imam Waliullah Abdelavi Rahmatullahi Alayhi was a Tabi'i. He was a Tabi'i. Some 1100 years after the death of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Annahu lamma kama Abdullah, it has been revealed to me so. Allama Shibli in his book he has mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam especially went to the jinn gathering six times. How many times? Six times. When you will go to Mecca and to Medina both. In Mecca, when you will go out of Babul Fatah 
and you will turn to your left and you will go a little bit ahead in the bazaar. Yes, so there in the bazaar you will see a small masjid that's called Masjid the Jinn. That masjid is called Masjid the Jinn, where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once he addressed the jinn. He addressed the jinn. And there is one Masjid the Jinn in Medina. Masjid al Jinn. At that time that was in the outskirts of Medina. Now that is inside the city. Now that Masjid is in because the city he extended a lot. But at that time that was outside the city. Abdullah ibn Masood said that once uh, there was a Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he told me that Abdullah I said yes sir. I said let's go. Because Abdullah ibn Masood he used to be in the services of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that's why he is called Sahibul Visada. He used to have a pillow in his uh, hands when he was going to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam somewhere. And when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa was sitting somewhere, so Abdullah, yes, the pillow. So that's why he got the title of Sahibul Visada. Also, sometime Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa yes, he, he was taking rest, so he used to give his stick to Abdullah ibn Masood. Because Prophet used to use a stick when he was walking. So he is called Sahibul Asa. He is called what? Sahibul Asa. And also, when Prophet was traveling or going somewhere, so he used to have a pot, lota, what? Lota, as we are using the pot there for istinja. For what? For istinja. Inside the bathroom. So that's called lota. That's called what? Lota, used for wudu, used for what? Now we have faucets, at that time there were no faucets, but people were using what? That lota and that part for wudu, and that part is called miza'a, what? Miza'a, miza'a means the tool of wudu, miza'a means the tool of wudu. So now, Abdullah ibn Masood, he used to have a visada, and he used to have the stick of Rasulullah sallallahu and used to have that. Mida'a and part for wudu. So he is called Sahibul Mida'a. Sahibul Mida'a. And that's why mostly Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah is giving tarji and priority to the riwayah of Abdullah ibn Masood that he was very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was what? Very close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abdullah ibn Masood says radiallahu wa ta'ala and that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took me with him. We went outside Medina. So in open area, a lot of people were there. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he draw a circle. Or he drew a circle with his stick on the ground. And he put me inside the circle. And he said, Abdullah, be inside the circle. And do not come out. I am going to address these people. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he went a little bit further. He was addressing them. And they are from the gathering. They are from... Even though people got together to listen to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But still, some bad nature people were there. Yes, in religious gathering there are some bad nature people. So Abdullah said, radiallahu ta'ala, some of them used to approach me, that let's have a visit. Let's have it. I said, no, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me don't come out of this circle. So when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came back, I told him that some of them they were approaching me. I said, yes, that's their nature. Yes, they were trying to play with you. Yes, and maybe they would have taken you somewhere. Yes, <laughs> but you did good job not to come out of that circle. Got it or not? وَأَنَّهُ لَمَّا قَامَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ It has been revealed to me that when a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stood up, يَدْغُوا تَنْوَوْكَ اللَّهِ to worship Allah كَادُوا يَكُونُونَ غَلَيْلِ بَدَا Kadu yakunu na ghalihi libada. So the jinn just made round him a dense crowd. As if sticking one over the other. To listen to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Libadan, look, putting things one over the other, that's called libad. That's called what? Libad. 
ஒருபிசிக்கல் must be only that of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in physical world you can ask and seek help of each other yes you know for example you don't have right and you said to professor professor can you give me a right to such and such place this is not shirk because this is alamul asbab our physical world this is alamul asbab or what physical world but metaphysical world you know for example look you want to have children you have to you want to have children so what you have to do yes the basic thing is just do marriage what just do that's physical word just do marriage that is physical word now you got married and you do not get children so now whom you will ask for kids that oh bless me with kids because the physics and the physicals are there but now that is a case of metaphysical It's a case of what? Metaphysical. So for metaphysical what? You will invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will what? You will invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you will go to the grave of a pious person. Yes, that I got married but I don't have children. Bless me with son. This is shirk. Yes, because metaphysically you will invoke only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now look. If you want to earn money. To earn. Just start a job. or start a business or something like that you know so you started a business but you are not getting benefit and profit from that, or that, that business now that is a case of metaphysical world so you have to invoke allah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless my business allah bless my business if you will make the same dua to somebody else that bless my business that is considered shirk is considered shirk so there is alam ul asbab or physical world and there is mafokal asbab metaphysical world one is called the alam ul asbab the second one is called fokal asbab fokal asbab or you can say alam ut tabiiyat and mafokat tabiiyat what alam at tabiiyat bring it to front why alam ut tabiiyat and physical world and the second one is ma fawq at tabiiyat ma fawq at tabiiyat literal meaning is beyond physical ma fawq at tabiiyat mean beyond physics are beyond physical so that's called literal uh, or, or technical word is metaphysical so in physical world in phys- we do use physics we do use matters we do use the things in this world because that has been created by allah subhanahu wa taala for our use yes allah subhanahu wa taala created car to write he created pen to pen to write created pen to write you need pen just ask as one can you give me a pen so nobody will make an objection to oh this is shirk you are invoking somebody else this is not invocation this is asking in physical world this asking what in physical world say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna ma adhu rabbi i invoke only my lord wala ushrik be khada and i do not make any partner and associate with allah qul say o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam inni la amliku lakum dharran it is not in my power to cause you harm wala rashadan wala rashadan or to bring you to the right path it is not my power i cannot cause you any harm if allah subhanahu wa taala does not want that i cannot put you in the right direction if allah subhanahu wa taala does not want that got it as in holy quran allah says innaka la tahdi man ahbabta 
یو کین ناٹ گائڈ ہوم یو لو او محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ولاکن اللہ یہ دی میشا دیٹ از اللہ ہو گائڈ ہوم ہی ہیلس ادر وائز پرافٹ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اونلی ون ایگزامپل ہی ہیڈ اے کین انٹرسٹ ٹو گائڈ ابو طالب ہز انکل ابو طالب از سچ این انکل ہو گیو ہز لائف ٹو محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم who devoted his services totally to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes he got into enmity with the people of Pakka because of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes he had a keen interest for abu talib to believe in his message even though he knew that he is a messenger of allah but knowledge is something and belief is something else there is knowledge and there is belief yes So belief is meant or knowledge is meant? Belief is meant. Knowledge is secondary. Belief is meant. Knowledge is secondary. In Islam, yes, knowledge is secondary. Belief is primary. So first of all, you must believe. Later on, seek knowledge. First you may believe. And if somebody will say, first I want to know, later on I will believe. He will never believe. Yes? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in nilam lekulakum zwarran it is not in my power to cause you harm wala rashada or to bring you to the right path kul se o Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in nilay yujirani min allahi ahadun no one can protect me from Allah's punishment. Walan ajida min dudi multahada nor should I find refuge except in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can protect me from his punishment if he wills so. Yes, and I cannot have any refuge except in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اِلَّا بَلَاغَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ My duty is بَلَاغَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ To convey the message which I received from Allah. My duty is to convey the message which I received from Allah. اِلَّا بَلَاغَمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرِسَالَاتِ But only the conveyance of the truth from Allah and His messages. وَمَنْ يَاسِ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِنْ هُوْسُ اَوَرُ دِسْحُبَيْزَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ إِنْ هِزْ مَسَنْجَرْ فَإِنَّ لَهُ نَارَ جَهَنَّمَا Then verily for him is the fire of hell خَالِدِينَ فِي آئِ will dwell there in forever أَبَدًا forever حَتَّى إِذَا رَأَوْ Till when they will see مَا يُغَدُونَ That which they have been promised Mean the punishment or the azab here in this world or in the hereafter. Hatta izara av ma yuhaduna till when they will see that which they have been promised. Fasayala muna so then they will know man azafu nasiran so who it is that is weaker concerning helper. Wa kallu ghadadan and less important concerning number. Because the people of Makkah they were believing in democracy. They did believe in numbers. They did believe in what? In numbers. That Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How can we believe in you or how we can follow you? Yes, our number is more than the numbers of your followers. Our number is more than the number of... Our words are more than your words. You know what I'm saying? And nowadays you can say like this. That we have more words than you. We have more power than you. Why you do not follow us? Why should we follow you? So Allah says tomorrow when the punishment of Allah will come, so then they will see that who have less helpers and less number. Yes, they will not have even a, sing, a second figure with them. All of them they will be standing alone and alone. All of them will be standing alone and you, O Muhammad, Sallallahu alayhi wa from Allah's side, the angel will be surrounding. Then they will see the number. Hatta izara out el when they say, Ma yu ghaduna that which they have been promised by Allah. Fasayala muna so they will know. Man azrafu nasiran. So who is that one who is weaker regarding helpers? Wa kallu ghadadan and less important concerning number. Kul say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told them, that believe in my message, 
otherwise you would be punished for sure you would be punished for sure so they said when they said when we would be punished yes for 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 the last so many years you are giving us this warnings or these threats so when so this is the answer قُلْ سَيْهُ مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهَ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ إِنْ عَدْرِ I do not know a karheebum ma to aduna that the punishment which you have been promised that is near am yajhalu lahu rabbi amada or my lord will appoint for it a distant time or a distant term I don't know whether that punishment is closed by on your doorstep or it has a distant term got it? عالم الغيب وعالم الغيب الله is the only one who is the all knower of the unknown things who is the all knower of unknown things because things are known either by senses or by intellect or by wahi either by senses or by intellect or by wahi and there are things the senses cannot approach it the intellect cannot approach it and the wahi has not discussed it and that is known to Allah only that is known to Allah only even that is not known to the messenger of Allah those unknown things are not known to the messenger because a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he does not have a wahi from Allah regarding a specific thing and that is not in the approach of senses and the approach of aqal so the messenger does not know yes As you know that Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam, his brothers, they threw him in the well, close to their own city of Canaan. To their own city of Canaan, which is Al-Khalil. Which is what? Al-Khalil in Palestine. So, the well, they threw him there in that well. And he was in the well for two or three days and night. So that was somewhere or two miles from Canaan. But his father Yaqub, he was crying for him. He was not aware of that he is still alive and he is there in the well. Which is one or two miles. Which is one? But after 80 years, not eight, eight zero. After 80 years, when Yusuf alayhi salatu wa salam gave his shirt to his brothers, they take this shirt of mine to my father. Yes? Yartaddu Basira, he has lost his sight, he will regain it back. He has lost his sight, he will regain it back. Now, they were coming, they are from Egypt, from Misr. Yes, hundreds of miles away. In Dumyat, what? Dumyat and Joshan, still the cities are there. Because Cairo was not there at that time. So the city was called as Joshan. It's gone. Dumyat and Jordan. Dumyat is still there. Yes. So at that time, the center of Egypt was Dumyat. That was the capital. That was the capital, Dumyat. So from Dumyat, when they started there from, so that many miles and distant area, here Yaqub in Al-Khalil, he was sitting the old man and blind man. He cried that much that he lost his sight. So he said to people sitting around him, his family members, the brothers and sisters, means his daughters and his daughter-in-laws and his grandsons and granddaughters and friends, and they were sitting there. So he said, that, Inni la ajiduri ha Yusufa, lawla antufannidun. I feel the fragrance of Yusuf. If you do not think me that I am crazy, so I do feel his fragrance. I do feel his smell, good smell. قَالُوا تَلَّهِ إِنَّكَ لَفِي زَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ So they said, oh, it means that your cassette reversed. It means, nowadays we can say like this, إِنَّكَ لَفِي زَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ Means old memories. لَفِي زَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ What? Old memories. إِنَّكَ لَفِي زَلَالِكَ الْقَدِيمِ Got it? So now, after a few days, when they arrived in Kinaan, and they brought the kameez and shirt of Yusuf, and put it on the eyes of Yaqub. So Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam once again regained his sight. So he said to the people sitting around him, Adam akullakum, inni a'lamu min Allahi ma la ta'lamun. 
I did not told, tell you that, oh, I have his fragrance. So look, so now they ask him, that what is this? And what's the story? That he was here in this well, one mile far, for two, three days, you were not aware of. And that many hundred miles, and you got his fragrance, or you got a smell, and you felt his existence, got it. So Sadi Shairazi, who? Sadi Shairazi, he said very beautifully, Ke kase pursed adgum kar da farzin, kase pursed adgum kar da farzin, Gulasi, that's for you. Kase pursed adgum kar da farzin, ke e roshan guhar pire khiradman. Kase pursed, somebody ask. Somebody ask, adgum kar da farzin, from that father who lost his son, Yusuf. Ke e roshan guhar pire khiradman, that oh, the intellectual old man. Oh, the intellectual old man. The Mishrash boy Pera Hanshimidi. The Mishrash boy Pera Hanshimidi. The Mishrash boy Pera Hanshimidi. Chiradar Chai Kilhanash Nadidi. The Mishrash boy Pera Hanshimidi. Chiradar Chai Kilhanash Nadidi. That you felt his fragrance. From Egypt, from Misr, why you have not seen him here close in the well of Kinaan? Darchai Kinaan Ashnadi. So what he said? Bagufta Haliman Barke Jehalast. Bagufta Haliman Barke Jehalast. Dame Peda Wadi Gardam Nehalast. That our situation. Bagufta Haliman Barke Jihanast. That our situation is like the lightning of clouds. The lightning clouds. Yes. Dame Peda Wadi Gartam Nehalast. Sometime it appears and sometime disappears. The lightning and clouds, sometime it appears and sometime. And at night, when it is lightning, you can see it to four or five. And if the area is open, yes, for tens of miles you can see the area. But when the lightning disappears, so you cannot see in dark stormy night your own hand even. So he said, Ke bagufta haleman barke jihanast, dame pedao digardam nehanast, gahe bartare me ala nashine. Abdullah say, gahe bartare me Twa alif ra meen. Balai baam. Gahe bartare me ala nashine. Sometime we are sitting there on a rooftop when the lightning is going on. So we can see so far and distant. Gahe bartare me ala nashine. Gahe bar pushti paaye khud nabine. So sometime when we are sitting on that high place we can see far distant. And gahe bar pushti paaye khud nabi neem. And sometime we cannot see what is on the back of our own foot. Got it? So it means that when we receive a message from Allah, we know a lot. When we do not, so we do not know what's going on. Got it? Or not it? Yes. So alimul ghayb is the all knower of unknown things. فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِ أَحَدًا So he does not give control عَلَى غَيْبِ on his غَيْب أَحَدًا to nobody. He does not give control. فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِ And second meaning. فَلَا يُظْهِرُ عَلَى غَيْبِ أَحَدًا And he reveals to none his غَيْب in unseen. إِلَّا مَنِ ارْتَزَى مِنْ رَسُولِ Except to a messenger from mankind. فَإِنَّهُ يَسْلُكُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِي رَسَدَى فَإِنَّهُ يَسْلُكُ مِنْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ So then he makes a band of watching guards, a band, 
of a group of watching guards. In la ho yas loko, so he carries membe niyade in front of that messenger. Wa min khalfi and behind that messenger rasadan a group of angels. He put a group of angels in front of that messenger, in the back of that messenger to protect him. To what? To protect him. It is said that Abu Jahl once he said to his colleague, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was sitting there close to the house of Allah. So Abu Jahl, he came and he said to these other elders that Muhammad is alone. Muhammad is alone. I am going to hit him. I am going to beat him. And to, get, to, to hit him. So they said, oh, just go. So he came. When he came close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so he was doing like this. Like this. Yes. And the people, they were watching him. That's why he is... Baking. So when he came, the people asked him, he said, Oh my God, I saw a big she camel there. A big she camel there. And that she camel opened its mouth. Opened its mouth. If I would have gone a little bit further more, it would have swallowed me. It would have swallowed me. And Prophet Sallallahu told Abu Bakr that today he tried to attack me. But Allah sent that angel in shape of a she camel and opened its mouth. And that guy, stupid guy, he ran away. Illa manir tazamir rasulin Accept a messenger whom he has chosen find no yes loko. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he put bene yade min bene yade in front of him min khalfe and behind him rasadan a band of watching gods and angels li alama so he may know al-qadab lahu risalat rabbim li alama so he may know or he may see al-qadab lahu risalat rabbim that the messengers have conveyed the messages of their Lord wa hata bimaladim wa hata bimaladim and that Allah surrounds all that which is with them wa ahsa kulla shayin al-hadada and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps a count of all things Allah keeps count of all things. Now the brief summary of Surah Al-Muddas, uh, Surah Al-Jinn. That all people of Pakka, if you do not believe in his message, look, the jinn believed in his message. And they conveyed the message to others. Number two, this messenger never claimed that he has the powers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, my job and duty is to convey the messages of Allah. See, a messenger is given a full protection. So they are very much sure and clear with his message. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the count of each and everything. Allah keeps the count of each and everything. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala rasuli Muhammadin wa ala wa sahabir ma'in. Allah marabu na alhamdulillah al-Quran azim Allah masakirna al-Quran 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 al